Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Comic Source Comic Boom collaboration. Time for another Spawn Daily. We're up to issue number 36. And it's pretty interesting because for the first time, we have a, a summary on the inside cover. So uh, I'll show you that in just a second. But just a quick reminder of what we're doing here. It's the 30th anniversary of Image Comics, which means it's the 30th anniversary of Spawn. And with the new Spawn universe that Todd McFarlane's kicking off, wanted to be involved in that uh, in terms of, of reading it and understanding when I read the first few issues, I was like, ah, I'm kind of lost. There's, you can follow it, but there's a lot of references and I wasn't getting, getting as much out of the story as I wanted. So reached out to Rocky from Comic Boom, my uh, longtime collaborator on DC Spotlights and whatnot. We decided we were gonna jump in and try to read all the Spawn main series this year to celebrate the 30th anniversary. So we read the first 12 issues leading up to Christmas, 12 days of Spawnmas. And now each day of this year, 2022, we'll try to put out a review of, uh, of one of the issues of the main series. So there's, by the end of the year, there'll be between 330, 340 issues. So it gives us a little bit of leeway with 365 days in the year, which is good because we've already missed one day. If you've been following along, you know, Rocky's had some issues with his daughter's health. So he hasn't been able to join me for, for these, but hopefully he's been reading. And hopefully he's going to jump back on. Maybe we'll even do a catch-up episode where... We can just go real quick, issue by issue, and he can give uh, some quick thoughts. So anyway, let's dive into issue number 36, which is a really good read, actually. Uh, let me go ahead and show So uh, interesting cover, as you can see. Um, it's like Spawn attacking Wanda, which, you know, wouldn't necessarily expect to see that in the comic. So as we turn the page here for the credits, Again, McFarlane on story, Capullo on pencils, just like we saw last time, it's split up. It doesn't say Greg Capullo, Todd McFarlane art, speculated on that. We can ask Greg if we ever have him on the show, or, or maybe Todd. Uh, Todd McFarlane is listed as the inker. We have Tom Orzakowski on letters. Steve Olaf handles the colors, along with Quinn Supley and Oli Optics. Special thanks to Kevin Conrad and Julia Simmons. And then you'll see below the, uh, the dedication box dedicated to Keith Giffen, we see Spawn 35 summary. So last issue 35, Twitch returns to work. Burke struggles to connect Chief Banks to Billy Kincaid. Banks calls Win. Banks learns that Spawn gave Win the file. Heads out to confront Spawn. Burke and Twitch go after Banks to warn him, hey, you're not supposed to go into the alley. That's when Spawn finds out that uh, uh, Burke never gave the file to Banks. Spawn also experiences a flashback, care of Cogliastro, where he learns for sure, once and for all, that Wynn was the one that ordered his death. Banks cracks under the pressure of, um, of confronting Spawn and tells Spawn about Wynn's connection to Kincaid. So that, along with the knowledge that, uh, that Wynn had ordered his murder, gets Spawn to head over to uh, the CIA headquarters or the U.S. What is it called? U.S. Security? Secret Security Group or something? U.S.S.G.? United States Security Group, that's what it is, USSG. Uh, but that spurs Spawn to go over there. He's finally going to do away with Win once and for all. Again, got to wonder, like we speculated and wondered many times, why didn't he do it long before? Don't know. But so just as Spawn is about to to take out Win, Terry Fitzgerald shows up and tries to save Win. And so to Spawn's perception, it looks like, this guy that was his best friend has betrayed him and is actually working for Win. So just another dagger in the heart of, uh, of Spawn. So we see on the first page here, Spawn still has the shoelace stitching up his face and he's yelling at Terry Fitzgerald saying, you traitor. Terry Fitzgerald, you know, he's, he's doing his job in all fairness and Spawn certainly doesn't have all the facts. And also you have to remember that Terry Fitzgerald doesn't know that Spawn is Al Simmons. If he did and he knew that Win uh ordered the hit i don't think terry does this i think terry would try to run interference for his friend and let him take uh win out so obviously spawn could could survive this but he doesn't want to expend energy needlessly and he certain certainly i don't think he's at a point where he wants to take out terry fitzgerald he, i think he's in more of a state of shock than anything so he wants to capture spawn he wants to take spawn alive get some information whereas uh, wins yelling at Fitzgerald, shoot him. What are you waiting for? This is a negotiation. And uh, Terry Fitzgerald's like, kill him's not going to give us any answers. He's more valuable alive, you know, like for what we can learn from him is in terms of his 
uh, formidability and whatnot and where he comes from and how he's got his powers. And, you know, Wynn doesn't want to hear any of that. He's like, guards, listen up. I'm relieving uh, Fitzgerald of duty. Shoot this guy <laughs> quick before he gets escapes into the shadows. Like, if you're Wynn and you're trying to win Ter- Fitzgerald over, I don't think this is the way to act. Not that Wynn is necessarily acting rationally. You know, he's sort of fearing for his life, I guess. Um, but still, and, and Fitzgerald knows that Wynn's a bad guy, so he's probably not surprised by it, though he may have to pretend to be at a later point. So they open fire, but Spawn is, you know, not standing where he was just a, a moment ago when they fire. He's, he can, you know, meld into the shadows. So he takes out a bunch of guards by throwing a couple of um, filing cabinets. They turn and aim in that direction. And Wynn's saying, there's no way he's going to get out of here alive. Spawn's response is, want to bet. Now he's all the way on the other side of the room. And he dives at uh, Wynn, and both Wynn and Spawn go tumbling out of the, the building. So they land many, many flights uh, below, many stories below, um, crashing through the ceiling. And Wynn is actually not too badly hurt. Like, you would almost think that he would, I mean, maybe Spawn cushion the fall, but I mean, that could have killed him right there. Um, but throughout this ordeal, throughout this confrontation, Spawn is saying things to Win like, I can't believe you don't know who I, who I am. And Win keeps, you know, imploring, who, well, who are you? How, how am I supposed to know you? And it's making Spawn angry. Like, you know, I'm the guy who whose life he stole, you know, someone who got in your way, someone who didn't count. Again, like all I can think, I don't know why Al Simpson has come out and say who he is. All I can think is that he, you know, he wants Win to make the realization himself. Like, do, do I even matter? To you enough win that you you will remember what you did uh it's like i said last issue when i was talking about it about this aspect of the story specifically it, it's almost like al simmons wants to provoke win to realize who he is so that then al simmons will kill him and win will die with al simmons name on his lips but just speculation i'm, I'm trying to explain why <laughs> this you know this dynamic is uh, existing again something else to, to ask todd at some point so anyway, while they're battling on this lower floor, uh, I'm sure all the security forces are, you know, trying to descend down. And this just regular Renacop security guard comes in and says, "Don't move, both of you." And and Win says, I, "I'm Special Security Sector 12. He's the intruder. Give me your gun." And the guy's like, "What for?" And Win just takes it and shoots him. Like, if there's any doubt that Win is just an evil piece of crap, he says, "I need a sacrificial pig." Which this, like, I get it. Again, no subtlety from McFarland showing us just how evil Wynn is, but it also feels a little unnecessary. Like the security forces, they're already going to do whatever and whatever Wynn tells them and whatever they can to capture Spawn. It's not like they that they need the extra motivation of, oh, like officer down or whatever, you know. So uh, anyway, Wynn runs out of the room and he's yelling at the people, help, the creature's gone mad, he killed the guard. It just, it feels unnecessary. Again, like Wynn's forces, they're going to do what Wynn orders them to do. They're going to do everything in their power to, to capture the guy. I, I guess just, hey, let's show that Spawn is not a, not a hero. I, I don't know. It, that, that part, it didn't play real well for me. It didn't, didn't seem very authentic. So anyway, over the ne- course of the next couple pages, Spawn's trying to find a way out. They're blocking all the exits. He's jumping around from floor to floor, trying to find a way out trying to you know preserve his energy not use his powers so that he you know it, it diminishes his power level he's jumping around and eventually he just busts right through a wall because he, they, they get him cornered and he has nowhere else to go so he's on the roof of the building next door you know that's not enough that's that's not out of harm's way as it were because again Wynn is head of the united states security group they have tons of assets and Obviously, they've called in like air support and all this sort of stuff. And sure enough, Spawn is on uh, the roof of the building next door when there's a helicopter a gunship. Again, this part is, you know, you kind of got to take it with a grain of salt. Wynn is giving the commands. He's saying, yes, you can fire. But I mean, this is New York City, right? I don't know that any military pilot, regardless of who's giving the order, is going to go, OK, I'll take the shot and fire this missile in a populated area just doesn't necessarily have that much of a, a ring of truth i get it like win is you know high high up on the food chain but i, I just it's it kind of stretches believability a little bit but 
be that as it may, it makes for a fantastic looking page. As we can see, the missile, the, the missile gets a target lock on spawn, it's launched, and we see a big explosion there at the top of the building uh, next to, the, next to the, uh, the CIA building, giant explosion. So uh, we do get a counter there too of spawn uh, 6887, which actually is the exact same amount of power he had at the end of last issue. So maybe he managed to jump away before the missile uh, hit him, or maybe he was able to, uh, the costume was able to get him out of harm's way. Regardless, he didn't have to use any energy if he even survived. Maybe, maybe the next time we see the counter will be at zero because spawn will be dead. So meanwhile, back at the 12th precinct, uh, we hear from Sam and Twitch based on their conversation that they turned over the file that they had on Burke to internal affairs. Now, Spawn had given this file and had a ton of incriminating evidence against Chief Banks, and Spawn had given it to Burke and said, show this to Banks, tell him to leave me alone, stay out of my alleys, or you know he's going to be exposed. Burke chose not to and chose instead to investigate the allegations in the files, trying to nail Banks himself, couldn't make anything stick, couldn't find hard and fast evidence, but was pressuring and, and making um insinuations to chief banks kind of leaning on him hoping he'd crack under the pressure instead you know, banks went running to win win sent him out after spawn in the confrontation in the alley last issue like we were talking about it all came out right banks chief banks knows for sure it's sam and burke that know about the bad stuff he's done they, they uh sam and twitch hear banks confess to setting billy kincaid on the senator's child so you know, everything's out in the open. It should be the end of banks, right? But again, Wynn, really high up, can, has a lot of connections, can pull a lot of strings. And so Twitch is, Twitch is pretty upset. He's like, I don't get it, right? We gave the file to internal affairs and there was so much evidence to at least force his resignation, if not have um, criminal files. And in no time, in less than 20 hours, banks is completely cleared of everything. And Burke's pissed off going, yeah, it took him three weeks to clear us for Billy Kincaid's body in here. And this guy gets off in like 20 hours. It's ridiculous. This whole system is dirty. And Twitch is speculating, well, it's got to be his contacts in the CIA, you know, that, that got him out of this. And so they're trying to figure out how they can link Chief Banks to, to what happened. How, how can they get rid of him? Uh, and they're thinking maybe they need to uh, to go to Spawn because it's, it's got to have something to do with Spawn. So while they're trying to figure this out, Banks actually comes and confronts them and says, you know, I can't fire you now because it would look too suspicious. But as you can see, I'm well connected and you guys better start looking for another job because as soon as the heat dies down, you're out of here. And it's it's pretty interesting because, you know, Banks is kind of throwing his weight around and Twitch, who usually is more on the timid side in a very small voice says uh excuse me and then he just explodes at banks and it's actually pretty cool he's like screw you you can't threaten me or my friend uh i have a copy of the file i've given it uh, to somebody safe and if anything happens to us i've arranged for it to go out to all the major newspapers and talk shows and i don't bluff so you better believe it not to mention that i'm a sharpshooter and if you're talking about you know doing any kind of harm to us you just remember you can be walking around the city and I can put a bullet in the back of your head anytime I want. So I like it. Like Twitch is standing up to this scumbag and it's, it's just great. It's great to see. And in my mind, banks can go at any, at any time, right? Like have spawn kill him or whatever. Like, I, I, I don't care. He's, he's almost as bad as when, well, in a way he's worse because he's also spineless. Uh, he's a coward as well. So uh, we do get a little, little interlude here uh, at grandma Blake's house. Again, it's just a little bit of exposition to let us know where Wanda's at with her charity and how, um, you know, a little bit of the family time here and everything seems to be going okay. Um, Wanda is talking about how Terry's been working a lot lately, trying to impress his new boss and whatnot. So obviously Wanda's not going to confide in, in Grandma Blake about the fact that, yeah, Terry's trying to butter up his new boss, but for the not for the reason that you might think right he's not trying to get in good with them he's trying to get in good with them so he can take them down um, as opposed to, to anything else so uh, then we get the three familiar talking heads that we've seen many times before cnn entertainment television the right wing guy they're talking about the explosion downtown and how nobody was seriously injured uh, except one guard was killed 
and they're denying that it's a terrorist attack. And, um, you know, again, not a lot of not a lot of ring of truth to this. Like a lot of talk about, you know, terrorist acts. Oklahoma City bombing is is mentioned. Uh, but yeah, just firing that missile in, in in city limits in New York, where there's you know densely populated, just doesn't doesn't have that ring of truth. So anyway, we see on the next page that Wynn is in the hospital. He's all bandaged up. There are some other colleagues of his. You know, I don't. We were told before that he only answered to the Joint Chiefs and the President. So not exactly sure who sure who these guys are. Maybe they're more you know lateral against them. But they're basically telling Wynn, hey, you're done, right? You're a smart man. You've brought too much attention. Uh, you have all these sensitive arrangements and, uh, you know, we, we have all this undercover and black bag stuff and we can't have the media crawling all over this. So, yeah, you, you're done. Right. I've been saying you're trash for years and, and now you've gone too far. So it's clear he's not even liked amongst amongst his colleagues. So one of them goes on to say, you know what, let me make one thing clear. You're alone. Like nobody's going to help you out. You're in a free fall this time. You don't have a parachute. No way you're coming out of this one intact. So. Just get some rest because this is going to be the last chance you're going to have to feel comfortable. So I, I'm just glad that, again, this guy obviously doesn't like when he's like, I'm just glad that you find, finally got exposed for, for what you are. So they all leave. A couple of wins underlings are talking about how most of their plans are, are in danger, plans overseas and whatnot, just because of the damage at the building and undercover assets are going to be exposed and everything. And wins like, listen, you got to make everybody, he calls his own, his own undercover agents he calls them pigs make those pigs understand that i'm going to have this resolved in a heartbeat and remind them it's not going to be wise to move against us like really like when you are some piece of work so anyway when the guys leave who shows up but violator and his clown persona and he's he's very happy with when he's like you've been doing a great job of putting the the, screw, the screws on spawn you've been doing exactly what i said and don't worry i'm going to use my abilities to make it look like a terrorist attack and nobody will be able to point the finger at you and you know i know it makes you want to kiss me but calm down um but even though you have been doing a great job with spawn you, you got to be sure not to push too hard because he will kill you and you know i need you around i've seen i've seen your you know on, on i've seen you on hell's dossier he says like very impressive, which, you know, makes perfect sense because Wynn is definitely a scumbag. So be high in the ranking for evil people. Um, so he says, yeah, keep pushing spawn, but try to keep your, your distance. So uh, and, and then a nurse comes in and distracts Wynn. And when he turns back, um, Violator's gone. So meanwhile, at, back at Wanda's house, she's wondering why the phone hasn't rang. It turns out Terry didn't hang it up. It's not charged. She's worried. He hasn't called. And there's a knock at the door, doorbell, whatever. And she goes to answer and it turns out it's Spawn. And, you know, last time she saw Al Simmons, Spawn, uh, he was beaten up on some guys and it really freaked her out. Almost to the point, I think, of it being a little over the top. Like, he, you were being attacked, Wanda, and he was protecting you. And I get that he's brutal uh, and he looks sort of horrific. But he's never threatened you or done anything to you. So I don't know. Again, she's supposed to be smart and intelligent. But the way she acts sometimes, she comes across as like two-dimensional and really weak as a character. And I don't like I don't really like like when we first got introduced to her, she seemed like such a strong, confident woman. And I, I'm not sure about this characterization that McFarland gives her. But anyway, she's, you know, screaming and ranting and raving and freaking out. And he spawned to his credit. He's trying to talk to her. He's like, I just want to talk. I just need a minute. I just want to talk. But again, she's not listening, freaking out, screaming, like kind of really sort of annoying in a lot of ways. Um, but I guess unless you're in that situation, Ken, maybe I'd freak out and cry like a little girl too. Who knows? Um, certainly would be a, a sight to see. Um, but anyway, he, he tells her, you know, Terry lied to, to both of us, right? Because again, Spawn believes that Terry Fitzgerald just betrayed him by trying to save Jason Wynn. He's like, and Spawn is probably even thinking that Terry was in on his uh, assassination because he wanted Wanda. That's what he says. He says, Terry deceived both of us. Don't you understand? He, he, he's protecting my murder. He must have not cared about me. He only wanted you, uh, but he doesn't love you like I do. And Wanda's like, what are, you, what are you talking about? So, I mean, this is pushing her even farther over the edge because he's already freaking out. He's like, I traded everything to, to be with you. And he's like, don't, don't, 
and now you're acting like you're scared of me, but you, you know me. Don't you remember that day at, at Coney Island, I promised I'd never hurt you? And at that moment, Wanda's like, wait, you're saying you're Al? How do you know what Al told me? Who are you? And he's like, no, 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 you can't be Al. He's dead. He's dead. Stop torturing me. And Spawn's trying to make her understand. And at that point, Cyan comes walking in. Mommy, is, is this bad man hurting you? And when Spawn sees that, he kind of, it, it's like a glass of, or a bucket of cold water being, being thrown on him. He just, he realizes he's not going to be able to make her understand. Um, I mean, I don't know, like maybe don't come barging in the way that you do. Like, if, I know you can't make yourself look like a black guy, but you could make yourself at least look human. That might've been the better way to go about it. Hey, I have a message from your husband and then start, you know, saying stuff, and because Spawn does, it, it, we are told that instantly Spawn calls to mind hundreds of details that only Al Simmons would know, uh, jokes they shared, but he doesn't get a chance to, to say any of them. But if he'd come in in a different way, you know, looking different, even if it is as a white guy, you know, surfer guy or what have you, um, but he ends up leaving, and we're told that it's just another bit of torture for him. You know, it's just hell twisting the knife, um, and as as Wanda's sitting there cradling uh, Cyan in her arms, trying to recover from this ordeal, she leans uh, against the answer machine and actually turns it on. And there's actually a message from Terry that says, Wanda, this is Terry, get out of the house. Spawn attacked. He's going nuts. He, he knows us. He may come there. So, uh, you know, I also don't think Terry handled it the best way. Like, it, it's tough. Again, I, you know, if if they knew, and and Spawn tried to tell Wanda in his defense, but if they knew, if Terry knew that Al Simmons and Spawn were one and the same, there's no way Terry leads that group in there. Like maybe he still feels obligated to save Jason Wynn. Maybe not if he knows that Wynn was responsible for Al Simmons' death, but I don't think he's standing in front. You know, maybe he orders them in. It, it wouldn't have been so bad for Spawn. Spawn's in a terrible spot here. Like he just feels betrayed left and right. Like he's got nobody left to trust just like the angst and just what a horrible, horrible feeling, like what a horrible position he's in. So great, great job by, by McFarlane, good writing to, uh, to put spawn. I mean, this guy's back into a corner, like he's got nobody. The only thing he has is some, some homeless guys who are his friends and, you know, not to take anything away from them. They're, they're people, they're loyal. Um, they seem to, to, you know, do whatever's in their power to help protect him. They, they lie to the police and whatnot. So all that is great, but they're not the people that Spawn cares about in terms of having history with, having grown, you know, grown and falling in love with his wife and, you know, going through all the training with Terry and, you know, going to, to combat zones with him and all that. Like there's a, there's a bond that's been forged there. And to have these people betray him, Terry, by, seemingly saving the guy that killed al simmons and then by wanda completely rejecting him when he's you know spilling his gut saying i'm your husband i'm al simmons and saying things only al simmons would know and she still denies it like i mean look what al simmons has lost he has sacrificed everything his his immortal soul and returned to earth five years after his death looking like he looks with no no shelter, no nowhere to gain comfort, nowhere to have it, it, just nothing. He's got nothing. He's all alone. He's all alone. And everywhere he turns, things are just getting worse and worse for him. Like he just can't help but feel terrible for the guy. So a lot of angst, a lot of emotion. Story really holds up. Like I mentioned last time, the exposition has been cut down on tremendously. And I, I love that these summaries are going to be in the front of the book. I don't know how long they last, but I love it. I feel like putting those summaries in there is great because it it lessens the chance even more of there being um, exposition. As far as the art goes, fantastic. Talked about it last time. Not sure why the change with McFarlane uh, inking uh, Capullo's pencils. Maybe it just took Todd a, a little while to trust that Capullo was going to do layouts the way that, that Todd wanted them, but... Uh, art's fantastic. A lot of action in this issue, as you saw as I was flipping through it. So yeah, really, really great issue. You know, ends not necessarily on a cliffhanger, but but leaves Spawn in such a terrible position that you feel for him. Uh, you, you sympathize with him, and you definitely want to read the next issue to find out what happens next. So uh, we'll be doing that tomorrow. So be sure and tune in. 
Uh, so don't forget, everybody, to subscribe to the Comic Boom YouTube channel so you can check out the art when we talk about these episodes. Not sure how long it's going to be before Rocky gets the videos up, uh, but I'll be releasing the audio uh, every day. When Rocky gets back from dealing with uh, the health issues and whatnot, I'm sure he'll probably do a massive dump uh, and drop a bunch of, uh, of videos up all at once. So if you want to be able to check those out, be sure you go to YouTube and subscribe to the Comic Boom YouTube channel. It's Comic Space Boom! Exclamation point. Subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell so you know when new videos go up, and go ahead and like this video. Conversely, if you do check us out on the Comic Boom YouTube channel, maybe you're on YouTube searching around for you know spawn specific issues, whatnot, and you found it, and you like the content, we have plenty more audio-only content on the Comic Source audio podcast channel. So best way you can find that, and be sure not to miss any of the interviews or reviews we do, is just go to your favorite podcasting app on your smart device or your favorite podcasting platform, Stitcher, Google Play, um, iTunes, whatever it is, and just do a search for the Comic Source and subscribe. So every day when we release our episodes, they'll be uh, right there on your device or on your uh, platform ready for you to listen to. So we appreciate you joining us and we appreciate the support as always. And we will talk to you next time.